way that time slows down when you kiss me as we fall asleep in a bed of butterflies just close your eyes and then you'll see it you don't ever have to look too far you don't have to cover up your scars you're perfect darling just the way you are so before you think to rip yourself apart open up my heart and you'll find love up to us to stop and smell each rose to the colors that we show it's the feeling that we trust and it's the brush that we both carry you don't ever have to look too far you don't have to cover up your scars you're perfect darling just the way you are so before you think to rip yourself apart open up my heart and you'll find love We're a bit late to join the rest of the pack in the bush, aren't we Fredo? You were helping me with the kids this morning, weren't you? So we're just going for a quick dunk in the pool because it's really hot and then we'll walk up the hill into the bush. Yeah, go to the bush. 
think I found Mike. Come on. Go find Mike. And the other doggies. Choppy Choo. Hi, Teresa. How are you, mate? Hello, Shadow. Bunjo boy. Hello, bunny boy. Hello, Maggie. <laughs> hey, Chanky. <laughs>
So, I just saw a cruiser. He came towards Roscoe with, you know how he does that with his ears go down and he gives him that lick. And then, because he was like on his way passing through, he's licking to Roscoe. He got to Barney's head and just went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what we were talking about before, wasn't it? Where he's recognising, I need to show respect to you. For you, you don't get any. <laughs> he almost did it by accident. By but he was, he, he stopped in his tracks. Yeah. It's funny how, you know, he's kicking up very quickly the dynamic. Hmm. Because we're like we we watch it, so we see it all the time, and, and we see it change, and we see it develop. But you know, if someone else was to just observe the pack, they'd probably have a bit of a hard time figuring it out really in depthly. Well, especially coming in, oh, just yeah, exactly, just yeah. one day walking yeah. into the group, not knowing any um, history or having seen them before, yeah. which is Cruz's scenario, mm -hmm. and, and he's um, just coming straight in and going. He's got them all. I know where you are. I've worked you all out within, yeah. you know, a week or so. Yeah. And then it makes me wonder what level of in intelligence he has compared to domestic dog, and whether he does have a bit more of an ability to have that complex social uh, life rather than a lot of these dogs that we have here they're they're not bred for that complex social living mm. you know they're bred for either a one owner dog and you've got a job to do you know mm. like joey for example mm -hmm. she is bred to respond to one person gel to them and just chase sheep and cattle all day mm. and come back to that one person whereas here it's a very different environment for generally you know, they're bred for that trait of, I've got an owner and I've got a job. Whereas you look at uh, some of the other domestic dogs, they are more designed around being social butterflies and, you know, being in an urban environment mm. where there is complex living and, and many dogs in, you know, built up areas. So again, that's, that's a different scenario though. It's not a living dynamic it's not a, a, a family pack mm. but yeah it's a it's a unique situation that that we've got here with this mismatched group of dogs you know mm -hmm. they're really just a big bunch of misfits and um you know we've come together as as a really united pack and we uh, say that in the nicest possible way yeah, you know very yeah. very uh endearing way but one of my favourite things about having created this pack is, you know, watching some of the new dogs come through, i.e. Tank and Chopper, and, you know, how they start to really value the relationship in the pack. And so they're starting to, it's a little bit prematurely sometimes, which it makes me laugh, but they'll try to start the howl like let's, let's let's do a howl come on guys high five and they rev each other up and they'll try to do it sometimes in like the wrong situation half the dogs are off somewhere else half are somewhere else and they'll start doing it and they might get one or two followers and they're like ah that didn't work we'll try again later you know it makes you laugh i've seen it do it a few times worth a shot brother yeah worth a shot and it's funny because tank and chopper both do it because they want it they feel like let's be a part of it you know yeah. We're, let's, let's be a part of the team yeah it's funny <laughs> Lily's just been promoted to HR manager. <laughs> and 
be grueling with an iron fist. Aren't you? Aren't you? Taking your job real serious. Oh, Miss Lily Girl. She loves it. It's the job she never knew she needed. Yeah. <laughs> it's the job that uh, Roscoe and Fredo don't want her to have. Because <laughs> they, get, they get told off a couple of times too. It's another hot day here, isn't it? It is another hot day. Uh, very still day today too. Yesterday was very windy and breezy, so it didn't feel as bad. Really, that was the first treat he's taken from me. He's lying in it. They are real stinky. This smells amazing. <laughs> They're lamb liver treats. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. It is very funny. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. got to eat it but not before putting a bit of it behind his ears. He's a very messy eater. Oh. Yeah. So again I'm not really sure you could put it down to it but he he eats without using his gum so he just all teeth and as it bites in half, it just falls out his mouth on the outside. He does it, he does a lot. I watch him and I'm like, why is he eating so much of it? And then he'll lick up all the bits that have fallen out of his mouth off the ground. Mm. Maybe just because they're used to breaking up. That's what I was thinking, he's used to ripping chunks off mm. an animal or... But he's not certainly used to it. But no. it's likely that, it's know, again, it's an instinctive way that he's doing it. Mm. Oh. Is that yummy mate? Is that good? That's a liver tree. No? Hey, yum yum yum. <laughs> Honey Sam is the treat dispenser. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't mean jack shoot because... <laughs> it does when you're holding this, that's it. As soon as it's given out, they drop you like hot potato. <laughs> what? Well, he's out. See if there's a better option. Say, Jay. I'm like an apple tree. They just have to shake me in the, in the tree. Just come out. <laughs> just burst.
He's got it, Fredo. So Diesel has been working on his um, behaviour around the big group of dogs in these intense situations. Yeah. And um, how's he going today? Um, yeah, he's improving. He's, he's getting better. Uh, I am still just sort of testing him out. I'm, he knows I'm watching him very heavily. And like he's working out what he can do as he starts to work himself up. Whereas usually he'd come straight in and start to start to bite them. Even that then was really good. He was saying, good boy, mate, good boy. Uh, just appeared right in front of him and you know, before he'd be indiscriminately nipping any dog that wasn't focusing on him, you know. They were focusing on me. And he would just come in and start picking up. So he's doing very well. This pacing back and forth is you know, uh, definitely allowed, and that's him wanting to get involved, but he just needs to compose himself. So I'm drawing out how long I'm holding the toy for. Usually I'd just drop and get the dog going. But I want, to, I want him to be exposed to that scenario to desensitize him. And so he learns to process it, he learns how to calm himself down and not lose control. So this is not a normal scenario, you know, like... Well, what do you mean by that? Well, as in, you know, you don't walk down the street and there's oh, no. 20 dogs, no, you know, no, no. at their most intense, excited selves. Um, you, it, it's even a unique scenario in a daycare situation. Yeah. Like, um, we most, were... Most daycares don't play with toys because it revs the dog That's up exactly so right. We, we, a lot of dogs came to us in our daycare and they didn't even throw a tennis ball at, yeah, you know, the so... the previous one, yeah. So I just wanted to put that, um, that disclaimer out there for, yeah. for, for Diesel. He, we're only training him with this because this is the scenario that he's in at the moment. But it is not a normal scenario in everyday life. So... No, it's not. And and to also put into perspective, the majority of dogs that came to our daycare had some kind of issue like this. Yeah. And we would have to work through it with them. So if... this is very common for me to do exercises like this in this daycare yes. setting. Yes. And I know that it's just a process. It it's is. It's just a matter of time before he desensitizes to it and realizes, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, normal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people, the... people that have been following us since before the rescue work and when mm. and they followed us throughout the daycare, especially the members, you know, to behind the scenes, um, they would know that uh, when we assess dogs for daycare, yeah. like, oh, my goodness, it was... It was even less than one out of ten that would pass yeah. to, to be accepted into daycare. I think I think one out of one out of maybe fifteen to twenty would be accepted on paper, and then when they came here, another you know as a high value. We we give them three weeks of like trial to see you know. But anyway, so we're just saying that in terms of we are asking a lot of Diesel. It it is a lot to ask of most dogs. Yep. This this kind of environment, and it's a common thing to misinterpret that intensity as hostility. Yes. And you know he is working out that. Okay, my instincts are kicking in. I need to herd this group. And they're not responding to him. So he's doing what innately he's been trained or bred to do. And that is get them moving by nipping them. And so now he's learning. He's doing very well. He's processing this. He's pacing back and forth. He's constantly observing, but he's not coming in and engaging. So this is fantastic. So I start to, like before you got here when you were getting changed, um, I did have to use a lot more, um, you know, body language presence to break into that mindset, uh, break into his, his uh, peripheral vision. Whereas now I'm taking a very passive uh, posture 
to see if that's going to entice him to slip back or whether he's taken that hint and he's moving forward. Which he's a very smart dog, so he's taking it on board quite well. Um, and so he's just been following the dogs up, racing up behind them. They all jump in, and then he turns around and comes back. And so there's been no contact, which has been great. The last, you know, five throws that I've done so far, they've all been really good. So no, no real hiccup. The very first time, though, he got r- uber excited, and I just started giving him commands, warning tones, sit. Um, he ignored the first couple, nice loud no, and then he sat on the no. So I was like, yep, good boy, that's it. You know, disengage, and then we're like, okay, let's do it again. So setting the bar really high straight away, asking for that response in that peak environment when I knew he was losing his mind. And then now he's constantly got me in the back of his mind. Where do I go? What do I do? Am I doing the right thing? Am I going to overstep the mark? You know, and he's conscious of what's going on. So if he does overstep the mark, the moment I say no to him, he should put two and two together pretty quickly because he's already on the ball. Um, So yeah, pretty positive stuff. Definitely showing very good signs of improvement. And uh, being the intelligent working dog that he is, he should continue to improve. But let's just rev it up a bit and see how we go. Here we go. Ready? Let's go. starts to realise he's just repeated that process about five times now. So he's run up, he hasn't made any contact, he's gone to the edge. One or two of them he's actually gone in and jumped in the water and then turned around. But he's found a sweet spot where he hasn't been getting any trouble. You know, where he's runs back and forth, he follows the dogs up, he comes back down, he's like, I can do this and I'm not getting in trouble. I love this, this is great. So it's it's simply a case of him not, him not having any boundaries initially and then just teaching him where the limits are. And it's a natural case of figuring out the hard way where the line is and where the overstep of the mark is. And but because he is such an intelligent breed, hey, sticking on the pie. Because he is such an intelligent breed, you know, they, they pick it up very quickly. I do really enjoy training working dogs because they're built for it. You know, they're, they're, they're very easy, they're very impressive. sweet spot and just pacing back and forth and then giving the dog space as uh, as I throw the, port, the toy and then races up, follows, like I said, that little leisurely swim, comes back down, let's do it again. You know, he's ready to work, he wants to go again and that's part of why initially he started finding himself in the wrong position because he's kind of trying to keep pressing the dogs as you would a herd of sheep or, or cattle where he's constantly pressing, pressing, come on, let's keep moving, let's go, they, they want to work. So it's it's good now that he's found that in this environment, he can pace back and forth here, dogs have been, you know, not watching him and accidentally bumping into him, and he hasn't been uh, going for them, which he has previously, so that's a good sign that he's not doing that anymore. 
Uh, he's no longer, you know, got those hunting eyes. Um, there is still, whenever Fredo barks, you know, when he really gets that intense bark, he seems to gravitate towards uh, that intensity, but he's showing attention, but he's not going into that lock-on mode. You know what I mean? Um, so this is good. He's showing control, self-control. Where are all the toys, guys? Who's got them?
Oh, 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 oh,
Pretty good session. It was good, wasn't it? After that, the other day, we're cracking down the law <laughs> and they're all behaving again. You know, usually there's all sorts of spot fires going on. Lily get in, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, did you see how she got in? Was she off this dock here? I didn't. That might be in the footage. I'm not I, sure. I saw when I threw the ball over. I don't know who it was, but someone was cut the front and just got bulldozed in. I'm not sure it was her, though. But could have been Joey. I thought it was know. one of the... But jo Joey does jump off the dock for the big ball. I thought it was so. one of the um, brothers, Tanker Chopper, like they uh, weren't ready for it and they just okay. got steamrolled over. Mm. But uh, it was good to see her when she was in, getting involved, having a few snaps at the ball. Yeah. It was cool. Down. I'd say it would be on the video. It was right in front of you. I was real impressed with it. Yeah. So he did this big jump and then just followed it, committed, and just landed on his back. Because um, Roscoe has power, so he goes far. Yeah. But Rover's right there with him, but he's always like a metre uh, higher. higher. But that's why he's going the same distance, because he has to get to victory. Whereas yeah. Roscoe's just got more power than he does. Yeah. If Roscoe put to that trajectory to go miles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, true. Did you hear that, Roscoe? <laughs> it's a fine line with him because you try to get him to follow a line up with the, and he often times it, so he'll jump and just give a quick sideways snap, you know. So you want to try and have it right there and come up high in front of him when he's launching that direction. Ready for it, Boom! <laughs>
because it's like, I've been from Fort plenty of times. <laughs> Maybe that's the way it goes. Let me tell you how it's done. Bounty. <laughs>